Today, Josh Martinez is here to break down all the drama on last night's MTV's The Challenge. Miami recording artist Amara La Negra gets real about music, race, and her time on love and hip hop. Look at me now, I'm still Amara La Negra. And the Diamond King, Neil Lane, drops by to give us a scoop on those stunning Bachelor Nation rings and weddings. Nobody really knows what it is, but it's got a feeling to it. This is your reality check. The take it or leave it. Hey guys, happy Thursday. Welcome to Reality Check. I'm Andrea Belke, stepping in for Lindsay Rodriguez for today. We have a great show for you to wrap up your week. Joining me now is recording artist and star of Love and Hip Hop Miami, Amara La Negra. Welcome. Yes. You Thank look you so, so much. beautiful. You, you do too. Thank you. <laughs> you have a birthday tomorrow. Yes, I do. I am so excited. Tomorrow's my birthday, Libra gang. <laughs> to all my Libra girls out there, and I'm really excited. Yeah. How yes. old are you? Want to talk about how old you're turning? Oh, I don't mind saying it. I'm gonna turn 29. I turn 30. So oh we're at that age, it starts to sink in. I know, but but the pressure of the 30s, you don't you don't feel it like, oh no. my God. And then don't you feel like your ovaries is also gonna start clicking? Like, oh my God, the kids, the family, the wedding, oh my God. Are you no? worried about that? That's kicking in for you? You know that in my mind, I thought that by now I already have a boyfriend at least or engaged towards marriage or something, but not even close. Just have fun. I've seen you on your yes. Instagram. Are you going to be parting it up, twerking? Yes. I mean, <laughs> hey, listen, twerking has nothing to do with getting married. I'm just <laughs> saying. Oh, That's God. true. <laughs> All right. We have so much to get into. Let's break down our top five. You ready? Yes, let's do it. At number five, Sophia Ritchie is pretty in pink. The 21-year-old model stepped out in a plunging leather mini dress, which she paired with knee-high snakes skin boots. Mm. Her outing comes after Keeping Up with the Kardashians dropped a teaser for her debut in the reality series alongside her boyfriend Scott Disick. So in the episode, Sophia joins Scott and Courtney on a family vacation in what Scott describes as an awkward situation. Mm -hmm. Would you go on a vacation yes. with your boyfriend and his baby mama? I surely would. <laughs> you would? Of course, because I'm the one. See, with all due respect, they were in the past, okay? And I need you to know <laughs> that I am the present and the future. Yes. So we all going. It's just one big family. That's right. <laughs> all right, at number four, Dancing with the Stars alum Floyd Mayweather might have a new day job. The professional boxer posted a photo on, to Twitter of his lavish indoor garage, showing off just 10 of his black luxury vehicles with the caption, my garage is looking like an indoor dealership with a few light toys, super casual. Fans are quick to comment on his all black spread of luxury vehicles, saying he needs to add some variety. How many cars does one person need? As many as you can afford. I mean, realistically, if he worked for it and that's what he wants to give to you know, himself, then go ahead and buy all the cars in the world. I mean, if that's what makes you happy, I think it's a little, a lot too much, <laughs> but it's not my money. So <laughs> who am I to tell you what to do with your money? That is true. If you had all the money in the world, how many cars would you have? Probably two. Yeah, that's really all you need. I mean, you know, pretty much. You have a luxurious one, a family one, and that's pretty much it, I mean, realistically. But what I would want to do with my money is completely different than what Mayweather would do. He likes to flaunt his money and show the world, you know, his, you know, diamonds and gold yeah. and cars. But hey, amen to you, my yeah, friend. Yeah, do you. All right, at number three. Cardi B is going where the money takes her. On Thursday, the former love and hip hop star appeared on the Ellen DeGeneres show and revealed that even though she didn't enjoy the filming process of Hustlers, she enjoys the checks and will be taking on another big screen role later this month. So she explained, she says, artists, we have long days, but it's full of excitement. Acting, you got to wait until it's your turn, do the same scene 20 times. You were in a movie, Fall yes, Girls, BET. Was. was that what the, the process was for you? Of course it was, obviously learning the script, having to go over and over and over again. They do it with one lens and the other, one angle, the other, the other. And obviously the people don't get to, you know, see that process. They just see it once it's finished. But it is a very long, you know, journey. But I personally enjoyed it um, because I wanted to do mm -hmm. it, you know. But I mean, I get it. You know, she has a really busy schedule. She has her husband. She has her child. She's on tour. There's a lot of things going on. So, you know. Have you seen Hustlers yet? I surely did. Yeah. Because I did, uh, I was able to do a private viewing with my friends and oh, family fun. and fans so it was really good I wish I would have seen more of Cardi mm -hmm. you know I wanted to see her twerk I, yeah. wanted her, I wanted to see her show you know show what she used to do <laughs> yeah but you know we'll see it in another okay I know she has another movie coming up so maybe then mm -hmm. all right at number two looks like Backstreet Boys may have a second generation forming Dancing with the Stars alum Nick Carter and his wife Lauren have officially welcomed their second child the newborn baby will join three-year-old brother Odin Rain so the news comes shortly after 
Walker, he revealed on Instagram that he was starting to get emotional about the baby's arrival. Are you down for the Backstreet Babies? I mean, I used to love the Backstreet Boys. I think, you know, we, I kind of miss that, and I feel like this, gener this generation doesn't really have an NSYNC, uh, you know, Backstreet Boys. They don't really have that. Mm -hmm. So I would love to see it happen again. I'm not sure if the babies will want to do it, but we're up for it. Yeah, I mean, if they do, they know someone that can kind of get them in the door, exactly, I would say. Exactly, exactly. All right, at number one. Kylie Jenner has broken her silence on her split from Travis Scott. The Keeping Up with the Kardashian star publicly confirmed the news, tweeting, Travis and I are on great terms. She added that the two are prioritizing their 20-month-old daughter, Stormy. She also debunked a tabloid report that said she had spent time with her ex, Tyga, mm. after photos surfaced of her at a recording studio the rapper was using. So she tweeted, the internet makes everything 100 times more dramatic than what it really is. There was no 2 a.m. date with Tyga. This has shocked a lot of people. What are your thoughts on the breakup? You know, I like the way that they treat their relationship. It's very classy. It's very, you know, they, they're very careful in what they put out. Um, and I think that that's what it's supposed to be. Celebrities, they show their artistry, they show all that, but your personal life is supposed to be personal. Mm -hmm. So I like the way that they're handling things. Now, between you and me and me and you, I think it was Kylie. I think maybe she oh. just got over it. Maybe she's bored. Because I don't think that Travis would do anything for them to break up. I mean, <laughs> where are you going to find another billionaire like Kylie? Tell me. Know, right? Nowhere. You have to be pretty dumb to exactly. break up with Kylie. So maybe she's, maybe she's just in a different place in life than when yeah. they first got together. Yeah. I mean, that's just me. I don't know. I may be completely wrong. Well, but... we'll see you soon. So, Amara, yes. reportedly, Khloe Kardashian has talked about toying with the idea of reconciliation with Tristan Thompson, her ex, after the whole cheating scandal. Yes. What you make of this? Is this a good idea? I think that it is. If it's in your heart to do something, then just go for it. There's nothing worse in life than regretting not having done. And if she wants to go back with her baby daddy, with her man, she didn't break up with him out of not loving him. She broke up with him because he did, he was unfaithful. So, But don't you think if she gives him another chance and gets back together, don't you think he's going to do that? Once a cheater, always a cheater? Yes, that is true. He's always going <laughs> to cheat, girl. You know what I'm saying? He's <laughs> definitely going to do it again. But, you know, that's not, you know, just go back. Try it one more time. Who knows? All right. Yeah. I mean, it's going to be worse if you don't go back and you hate yourself for the rest of your life for not giving yourself one more opportunity. Especially because there's a baby involved. In exactly. Baby she really does love him. Yeah. All right. Um, let's talk about you, though. What yes. have you been up to since season two wrapped? What have I been up to? I've been traveling, I've been working on music, doing movies, my children's book, I mean collaborations with brands. I've been doing a little bit of everything. Yeah. Yes. Will you go back to season three? Is that something that's gonna happen? Oh my God, I don't know if we're supposed to say this, but we actually started filming yesterday. Oh, really? Yes! What? Oh my God, was that like an exclusive That right was now? an exclusive, <laughs> just drop that right here. Yes. What well, can you tell me about filming? Well, so far we just started. So where was it? Everything's very brand new. I'm um, at home. Okay. At home, I have. A, I bought my first home, so I wanted to share this with the world and the journey, the experience, the process is not as easy as I thought it would be, but I am more than grateful. So it started there, and then um, I, I can't tell too much. I'm gonna get in trouble. That just keeps spilling. No one's watching. <laughs> We're just like having a conversation, just one on one. But just know <laughs> it's gonna be really good. I'm excited for this season, and I want the I want the people to see a different side of Amada. Yeah. So I'm working on. And that how's one. your book going? My children's book is. Is going great is available on amazon.com and on barnes and nobles all around the united states um and now we're working on the second edition of amarita's way mm -hmm. so besides the twerking i also <laughs> write children books that's right you do it all I, I do it all i do it all so everything is going good and i am more than blessed yeah so some big news in your world though erica mena and safari announced they have a baby on the way yes. have you talked to them since the announcement no, we don't uh, We don't really talk like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've seen them on social media and I wish them nothing but the best. Did you get an invite to the wedding that's apparently happening this next week? Um, no, like I said, we don't really talk yeah. like that, you know, but I wish them nothing but the best and I hope that they're very happy together. Yeah, well put. All right, switching mm -hmm. gears, want to get your take on last night's season finale of Basketball Wives, where we saw OG and Evelyn get into it yet again, this time about Evelyn's ex-husband, Chad Ochocinco. Chad wants to be wedding. with a black you woman. You're not Are you black. serious? Uh, you can say n this and n that. I have sat at dinner tables hearing her use the N word left and right, and it's disgusting. I identify with being Afro Latina, and guess what, bitch? I'm proud. So you can say my. So we see there, she did an interview, said she identifies as Afro-Latina, but then in some earlier tweets from 2012, she said she doesn't identify as black. So what is your take on all of this? I think that, um, I think that there is space. Um, 
if you didn't know about your culture, if you didn't know about your background, or if you didn't know the terminology that you, you know, that you're supposed or the right way of saying it, I think that there's a possibility that she got informed, Evelyn, when she found out with the terminology of Afro-Latina. Mm -hmm. So I understand. I don't know about her past and why she would say she doesn't identify herself as black, for which as an Afro-Latina means you come from African descent. So. Uh, yes, you are black, but I mean, I just, it just sucks that amongst ourselves, we always feel the need to, you know, bash each other on that, you know, saying that she's not black. I mean, she is. And if you don't know about our history, then go ahead and read a book. I don't know about the OJ girl. I have never seen her in life till this scene. Um, but I just feel it's very ignorant. If you want to start bashing someone, you first might want to start by taking off the blonde wig and continue. Great. Yeah. <laughs> Amara, thank you so much. No, yeah, your take on you. everything. It's right? so good to talk to you. And this weekend, you can meet Amara at the festival People in Espanol in New York City. This year's two day festival will feature exclusive interviews, performances, and autograph signings with today's top Hispanic celebrities. Amara will be a part of the Paying It Forward panel this Sunday. October 5th. What are you going to be talking about at the panel? I am going to be there to, to motivate, to inspire other girls to never give up on their dreams. And I think that the biggest way of telling my story is to just be clear, be, be blunt, and just talk about my experiences. So I'm going to be taking pictures. I'm going to be bonding. It's going to be a great experience. And I am so grateful for people in Espanol for always supporting me. I really am. Thank you. Have so much fun at that. Have so much fun tomorrow for your birthday. Yes! I'm so happy for you. Yes, I'm going to be at stage 48. So if you guys are out here, come join me. Let's have some fun. OK. <laughs> All right, we're going to take a quick break. But when we come back, I'm chatting with Josh Martinez from MTV's The Challenge. Don't go anywhere. And welcome back to Reality Check. On the line now is Josh Martinez from MTV's The Challenge. Hello, Josh. We go way back. Hey, How are you yeah, doing? Do. Good, good. How are you doing? I'm great. So why are you in a car right now? Walk me through what's going on. So I'm actually in Miami um, in my car service headed to London for the reunion. So it's about to be a whole bunch of madness. But yeah, I'm actually on the way to the airport and just wanted to jump up. Wow, so we're in real yeah. time right now. Let's break down the episode. So yeah. outside of the actual gameplay, I got to ask you about that steamy makeout session with Georgia last night. So yeah. was that a surprise <laughs> for you? I mean, no, to be honest with you, me and Georgia have a really good uh, friendship and a good relationship outside of the house. We kind of hit it off during last season's reunion and we vibed well and then it just kicked off, like picked back up in the house. Um, but yeah, it's 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 complicated. Obviously, you guys saw with the whole bear situation. But I mean, she's 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 a fun time. She's a good girl, and I just I just couldn't help it. Yeah. Did you care that she was making out with you pretty much just to make bear jealous, or did that not phase you? You know what? Um, yeah, it kind of pissed me off to be real with you. I didn't want to get involved in the whole situation from the start because I know that there's strong feelings there, and I am really good friends with Bear too. So it is kind of awkward. But at the end of the day. And really into her, and I am attracted to her, and um, you know, it just it just happens. It, there's a lot of downtime in that house. So okay, so you're attracted to wrong. her. <laughs> you're attracted yeah. to her. What's your relationship with Georgia like now? We have a really good relationship. We're actually messaging right now. Um, I'm going to see her in a few hours. I mean, I'm going to see her tomorrow morning. So yeah, we have a really good friendship, and we're in a good place. Okay, so what's going to happen in London? Yeah. You said you're going to see her. Are you going to maybe take her out on a date? Yeah, we're probably going to go on a date, go out, hit up some clubs, just hang out. She is she is from there, so she knows a lot of good spots. And we're going to spend some time together. I'm really, really happy to see her. And it's been a while, so I'm just happy to be reunited with her. I'm just going to say, I'm not sure if we're still using the term ship, but I ship you too. So let's get back <laughs> uh, Last <laughs> night, you said that Polly betrayed you by sending bananas in after shaking your hand. That led to the two of you getting into a very heated argument that got very physical. Yeah. So what was going through your mind when all of this was happening? Yeah, so basically, long story short, he had, I get the whole part with, him having jo on Wes's side and me having Johnny's side, I think what did it for me was the constant disrespect. Before that scene, before that argument, he got in my face on the bus and it just carried on into the house and you guys didn't see that. And he actually told me to, like, told me to fuck off and, you know, got in my face really aggressive. So I was like, you know what? I'm not going to let that pass. There's no way that I'm going to let somebody disrespect me like that, especially somebody that I considered a friend. So just the way that he kept talking down to me and then I saw him kissing Turbo's ass and having to explain himself to Turbo. But I thought we also had a friendship, so I expected the same respect that he was giving Turbo. 
Whereas and he kind of just talked down to me, dismissed me, and disrespected me, and showed me that he was never truly a friend. Yeah, Whew, a lot of drama. Now, yeah. in the wake of all yeah. the betrayal, Leroy stepped up, insisted that the tribunal should make decisions based on what the team wants. What was your reaction to that? I think, you know, Leroy is somebody on Team U.S. that I really do respect, um, you know, and he did try for most of the season, for most of the time, he did try to, you know, play neutral and, you know, do what was best for the team. But you guys are going to see it play out where, as in, you know, there are numbers. I think that you guys kind of see it, but you really don't under, you don't grasp really what's going on. These people came in with their numbers. They formed a huge alliance before coming into the game. So it wasn't about who was stronger and who wasn't. That's how they justified their moves because they already weren't working with those people, so they were going to target them. You know, that alliance, um, it, there were a lot of people, there were a lot of numbers, and it just so happened to be that, you know, the ones that were in the outs were the ones getting targeted. And the reasoning was, oh, they're just strong competitors. That's why they targeted Jenny. No, it's because she wasn't part of your numbers. She was part of team you know, the other side, the outsiders, and, you know, that's what she yeah. got targeted. Well, should make for a very interesting reunion. Josh, thank you so much oh. for chatting with me. Yeah. Looking forward to seeing how your time on The Challenge unfolds. Best of luck with Georgia, okay? MTV's Thanks. The Challenge <laughs> airs Wednesday nights at 9 p.m. All right, we have to take a quick break, but when we come back, Neil Lane is joining me to talk rings, weddings, and his new book. Stay tuned. Welcome back. I'm now joined by jeweler to the stars, Neil Lane. Welcome. Thank you. How are you? I'm nervous. No, don't be nervous. We're going to talk rings. This is okay. your bread and rings. butter. I can talk rings. Okay, we can do this. So your first book, Style Your Wedding with Neil Lane, is out now everywhere books are sold. So in your book, you walk readers through selecting and refining their own wedding aesthetic, employing six different themes. So tell us about these six themes. Well, I thought about all the rings I've done over the years, and I tried to find something thematic, like a romantic one, a vintage one, a, uh, a, a, a modern day one, uh, a, an elegant one. Yeah, let's start with the elegant one. So talk me through the elegant. Well, I thought an elegant was it be a round, uh, something round, circular, but I chose an oval, mm -hmm. with little diamonds around it, and little detail, and when you look at the side of it, it sort of says, I love you in diamonds. Ooh, I, I like elegant that. Elegant and chic. Let's talk romantic, because this is my favorite one. Is it? Mm -hmm. Romantic. Well, I, I always say that I did it, I did it to pear shape. You know, I love the, the contour of the pear. And I did it you know, homage to my mom. So when I was a little kid, when she was cooking, I would see this pear shaped diamond. So when I had opportunity, I wanted to design one. So I did, and we set it in rose gold, which is completely different the way it was set in the 1960s. And I think it's one of the prettiest things I've ever made. It's so beautiful. It's my favorite. So future husband out there, just pay attention, right? <laughs> the romantic one, the pair. I need the romantic gold. one. All right, now tell me about lavish. Lavish. There's a lot of stuff happening in it. There's an emerald cut. There's two emerald cuts on the side. Lots of little diamonds. Uh, it's just, it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. All right, modern. Modern. It's taking it, it's, it's tone from elegant but it's putting black diamonds on the band. Yeah. They give it a little edge, sort of modern, like zigzag, white and black, clean. It's a really, really unique touch there. Well, that's what I have to do. I yeah, gotta, I know, I gotta, gotta keep it fresh. <laughs> How about rustic? Rustic. Well, I like rustic because a lot of, you wanna wear your ring. You wanna go in the garden, you wanna do tomatoes, you wanna clean it, you know, whatever, you know, it's, just beautiful. Just wear it out in the garden, you yes, know, super it's simple, cash. Beautiful. And then lastly, talk me through vintage. So vintage is at my heart because that's how I started in my job was selling vintage jewelry. So that aesthetic is going back. I found that marquee, which is sort of an old fashioned stone. People don't use it as much. And I was able to design angles and triangles around it, all little diamonds and something to bring you back to like the 1920s or something like that. Yeah, well, I yeah. love these themes. Now, let's talk about some of the Bachelor Nation weddings that we love using sure. these themes from your book. So let's start with Rachel Lindsay and Brian Abisolo. Okay, they got, uh, all right, they're an amazing couple. <laughs> you know, I, I, I know these people for almost two years, when I first approach them, then they get married. They just got married in Cancun. Mm -hmm. So I would say, I would say they had a modern wedding. Yeah. Her dress is sort of very modern. It was sleek. I would give them the, mod the modern ring okay. with the black diamonds and white All diamonds. All right. Yeah. Now, how about Ashley Iconetti and Jared Haven? 
So they got married in Rhode Island, which is like the Gilded Era mm -hmm. from the great, you know, mansions on, on I don't know, Newport Beach. Um, I would say it was a lavish wedding. Okay. Lavish. So I'd give them the lavish ring, and it's, if you've seen the pictures, it's giant flowers. It's so beautiful. Very lavish. Very now, lavish. Ari Leyendijk and Lauren Burnham, how would you describe their wedding? Oh, my gosh, that's a hard one. Uh, I would like to give them lavish again, but it was in Maui, and it was very tropical. Uh, I'm going to give them the elegant ring. Yeah, perfect. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much, That's Neil. Thanks for stopping by. My pleasure. Now, if you are in New York, you can meet Neil at a book signing tomorrow, October 4th, at the K Jewelers pop up from 11 a.m., 7 p.m. on Grand Street. Otherwise, grab your own copy of Style Your Wedding with Neil Lane. It's available everywhere the books are sold. We're going to take one last break. When we come back, we are hitting you with another great moment in reality TV history. Stay tuned. So sadly, that's the end of our show. Thank you so much to Amara Lanegra, Josh Martinez, and Neil Lane for being such great guests today. Now make sure you are following people on Twitter so you can catch the latest episode of Reality Check, which streams Monday through Thursday at 4.30 p.m. Eastern. Now to wrap up, I'm gonna leave you with this moment from one of my seasons on Survivor. If you watch closely, you might see yours truly. I'm Andrea Belke, and that was your Reality Check. In this 2013 episode of Survivor Caramon, Brandon dumps out his own tribe's food supply after hearing that fellow tribesman Philip is plotting to vote him out. Hey, Phil, here's a reason to vote me out, you little... Brandon is clearly not helping his cause, but he just can't seem to keep it together. Later, he loses it all over again, this time in front of Jeff Probst. You ain't gonna tell me you're running the game. I took myself out of this game. Brandon's meltdown is one of the great moments in reality history and made it real easy to guess who would be leaving the show that week. All right, six person voted out of this game, Brandon Hans.